let's talk about the proofs that you need to be able to use a z-score. If we're dealing with means, we have three different proofs that we could use. If any one of these three is true, then we can use a z-score. So the first one is if we are told that the underlying population is normally distributed, is bell-shaped, and the population standard deviation is given, if all three of those pieces are true, then we can use a z-score. But let's say we aren't told that the underlying population is normally distributed. Then we need to start thinking about the sample size. So our first one here is if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and the population standard deviation is given, then we can use a z-score. So if number one is not true, if we cannot find all of those pieces for that first proof, then we can move on here to number two and see if this one is true. If neither one of these are true, then we have to just look at the sample size. If the sample size is greater than 100, we can use a z-score. So for one and two, we need the population standard deviation. We need sigma to be given to us. But number three, we just need a, a large enough sample. If it's greater than 100, then we can use a z-score. So those are our proofs for the means. And if any one of those three are true, then we are allowed to use a z-score. If we're dealing with proportions, both of these proofs need to be true. N times P, your sample size times your proportion, needs to be greater than or equal to 0.05. And N times 1 minus P needs to be greater than or equal to 0.05. And again, both of these need to be true when we're dealing with proportions.